Bayer Bosink, the studio, day one, Beef 2012. And have we got a lineup for you? You'll be hearing from Rogan, who's interviewing a number of key people within the industry today. Enjoy. I'm here with the United States Department of Agriculture, and we are here to promote livestock from the United States internationally. We're kind of chasing the Angus breed. Uh, you know, that's how they became so famous with their marbling, tender steaks. Roughly, Billy, what are your conception rates that you've seen firsthand? Well, an average is somewhere between 40 to 60%, I think. I mean, if you get 50 to 60% conception rates, that's, that's acceptable. But, you know, I would love to be able to get 80%. I've been in the cattle industry all my life. I'm a, I'm a fourth generation cattle producer. The efficiencies in, in, in the cattle industry have gone ahead le leaps and bounds in the last 30 to 40 years. Transport industry is a really shining light. The costs are certainly uh, one of our biggest challenges. The high Australian dollar. It's been, it's been very difficult to make ends meet. It's the live export trade that's made the cattle industry in Northern Australia. It's such a natural market for us. You've got 200 odd million people just to, to the north of us. We should be directing all our infrastructure into Darwin and through Darwin and out. Things look very bright, I believe, for the, for the cattle industry. I can only see positives. Do you know what your average pregnancy rate would be, percentage-wise? Uh, calving percentage uh, on the Charter Stowers property runs at about 98%. Yep. Uh, the top property is running at about 77, 78. It's been tough as a reseller, it's been tough as a supplement producer because we, we've had a fairly good run of, of rainfall in the last three years throughout Queensland. So Tim, just tell us a little bit about your area of expertise. Well basically at Rocky Repro we're a reproduction centre, Rogan. Uh, we sort of specialise in semen collection and processing of cattle. There's been some huge gains in genetics. Um, a lot of great work's been done by many different Australian officers and, and bodies as far as uh, really, you know, vamping up the performance of cattle yep. and being able to measure cattle and being able to reproduce those genetics that are really desired. Uh, certainly with a lot of the work that's being done in DNA markers, uh, and genomic enhanced EBVs. I think all those sort of uh, innovations are really going to take us a, a long, long way. We've got some seed stock producers here in Australia that are doing an absolutely fantastic job in producing uh, some quality genetics. And I just feel that we're a little bit let down by our governments as far as getting that genetics overseas. Is there a, a secret success to, to good genetics and a successful breeding program? Well, I think it's a balanced approach. I think as soon as you go off on a tangent and particularly chase one trait, like too much growth, that will be at the expense of another trait, maybe birth weight. But I think that's the, the key to it, is just having a really balanced approach. We run a Belgian blue stud in the heart of Gippsland in, in Victoria. Uh, it grows grass 365 days of the year, which, which suits the Belgian blues. What's, what's your percentage of carving, would you say? Uh, 95%. We do an embryo program um, to provide embryos to, to further breeders throughout, throughout Australia. We've got a breed that requires very little stimulant to produce embryos and we haven't had a product that will, can reduce our uh, hormone release. Artificial insemination in Brazil is growing very fast. Now in Brazil we are using synchronized ovulation or artificial fixed uh, ov uh, time of ov ovulation for embryo transfer. So what in your mind are some of the critical key elements for good genetics and a good breeding program? Nutrition and quality of supplies you are using in your breed program. What are the challenges you're facing right now in 2012? Uh, cost reduction is one of the biggest factors um, and by simply AIing you can lift the quality of your herd very fast and have multiple size in a tank rather than multiple size in a paddock. The, the use of genetics and and um, the ability and access to genetics is far greater than it's ever been. The simple programs you can run now, the ability to increase the value of herd fast. Now you can actually synchronise a mob of cattle, get them done in a short program and increase the volume of the cattle output you're sending out. Yeah, we synchronised about, about 80 heifers this year uh, with the sole aim to try and target it back to a period where we knew animals would come on heat. So you've got to make sure your time is best spent. So we synchronised them back to a, to a um, to basically a, a 
four day period where we could actually target AIing a mob of cattle. Um, and then obviously once we knew they'd cycled once, whatever came on we AI'd a second time on a second cycle. And um, we basically end up with about a 75% success rate on the two cycles. Thanks very much for dropping in mate and uh, all no the best in doing time at Beefly. Alright, thanks Cheers, mate.